While the new Radeon RX 9000 series GPUs have been out for a while now, Gigabyte has recently added new models to its lineup in the form of the ICE variant. Essentially, these ICE models perform pretty much the same as the Radeon RX 9000 series in black, which I reviewed at launch, but they are now in white. However, while the GPUs are technically identical, FSR 4, which is exclusive to the 9000 series GPUs, has grown a bit since launch. So while this review is rehashing what I've already covered, it does offer the perfect opportunity to test out some new games. Before we get onto the performance and the benchmarks, let's quickly go over the design of this Gigabyte Radeon RX 9070 XT Gaming OC Ice. It is white instead of black, of course. The exterior shell is much the same here, with a sort of rugged look on the exterior. It comes with the same RGB logo slider that can move up and down across the side of the GPU, and a giant G symbol on the tip which represents the gaming range. Keep in mind that this G spot is actually more of a grey shade than white compared to the rest of the card, so it kind of sticks out as a result, but maybe Gigabyte sort of wanted that to happen. Lastly, the expected triple fan wind force cooling system is also present on the card. It also comes with the screen cooling cutout at the back end of the GPU, and there are some logos on the bottom, including the AMD Radeon and Gigabyte Gaming logo. It uses three 8-pin PCIe power connectors, each featuring a white LED to show if they are connected properly. And the GPU comes with two HDMI 2.1b ports and two DisplayPort 2.1a ports. You're looking at a GPU that is 288mm in length, 132mm in width and 56mm thick. From a technical perspective, the Gigabyte Radeon RX 9070 XT Gaming OC Ice recommends a 850 watt power supply. It has a 256 bit memory bus, 16 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM, a memory clock of 20 gigabits per second. It packs a boost clock of up to 3060 megahertz and a game clock of up to 2520 megahertz. Both of these clocks are slightly overclocked out of the box compared to the reference model at 2970MHz and 2400MHz. You'll also get 56 RT cores, 112 matrix cores and 224 TMUs. I don't have any complaints about the overall design and look of this GPU at all. It is fairly large so you'll want to use an anti-sag mount here just in case. There are some cool subtle design features here that make this card look great. If you're looking for a white GPU that is an RX 9070 XT, you pretty much can't go wrong with this card. Setting it up is straightforward, I connected the GPU into my Haven HS420 case, secured it with the GPU bracket, connected all the power cables to the GPU and I was good to go. If anything, while I hate the Nvidia 12VH PWR cable, I just kind of wish that AMD would do something to thin out all these cables because 3 cables dangling from a GPU is pretty ugly if you're trying to go for neatness. When it comes to the performance, AMD is targeting high-end 1440p and low-end 4K gaming on this card. This means when playing 1440p, you can get away with essentially every game maxed out without ever relying on FSR. 4K gaming, however, you need to lean into FSR to boost some frames and resolutions in order to get your ideal experience. For these tests, I am using a closed PC environment with the following components. I have an AMD Ryzen 9950X 3D CPU, 64GB of DDR5 6000MTS RAM, an X870 Aorus Wi-Fi 7 motherboard, an Aorus Waterforce X2 360 cooler, the Gigabyte AMD Radeon 9070 XT Gaming OC Ice, and it's all packed into the Haven HS420 gaming case. So I benchmarked some games. These benchmarks spanned not only FSR 4 titles, but also games without the technology built into the game.
the Gigabyte AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT Gaming OCIs is a very capable card as evidenced by its benchmarks. It consistently delivered 4K at 50 or 60 FPS when maxing out game settings across most of these benchmarks. However, for more demanding games, tweaking FSR does definitely improve the experience and it obviously ups those frames. Speaking of FSR, the latest iteration of the technology, FSR 4, still does an incredible job on its own. The tech is really a night and day difference compared to FSR 3 when you look at the sheer quality of the games and how the upscaler works. I just still wish it was more readily available. I feel like we're almost a year into the launch of FSR 4 and we still don't have games supporting the upscaling and even worse, new games released and they don't even adopt the technology at all. The card effectively managed its cooling though, I found it difficult to push this card above 56 degrees celsius during extended tests. The fans did reach 1800 RPM and the game clock peaked at 2845 MHz while the card was drawing 305 watts of power. The great thing about this performance is the low power consumption that doesn't cause any thermal bottlenecks. The substantial overclocking headroom here allows you to easily reach the mid 3000 MHz clock speeds without worrying about cooling. With slight power increases, I expect this card would at least hit 3400 MHz or higher. Fans were noticeably loud on this card. General gaming resulted in a 48 dB fan noise which uses around 75% of the fan speed. Maxing out the fans to 100%, which you'll probably never do, did send the sound level to 60 dB and of course is pretty unbearable. Thankfully it is a speed that you'll likely never have to deal with. I praised the black version of this card back when I reviewed it earlier this year and I have equal praise for this ice version too, perhaps even more given that it just looks really good in my case. This is a capable card that performs very well but it does often feel underutilized once again by the lack of FSR 4 support. Once again, I hold out hope that one day we'll get even more FSR 4 games but in the time being, FSR 3 does work pretty well so there's still benefit here for this card. If you're comparing this card to others on the market, it is likely under the RTX 5080 but sometimes above the RTX 5060 and 5070. Yes, it does struggle with ray tracing performance more than Nvidia's cards, mainly due to the lack of tensor cores, but I think that ray tracing is often overrated in most games anyway, and is a major performance hog for just subtle prettier games. So in the end, the Gigabyte AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT Gaming OC Ice is a great buy. If you've been waiting for a white variant to come around, this is definitely worth it. You're getting a solid card here that performs across all games and looks pretty awesome at the same time. So those are my thoughts on this GPU. Huge thanks to Gigabyte for sending this card my way to review. While you're here, be sure to check out my other GPU reviews I have up on the channel. And also subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Until next time, farewell.